Welcome to Nevertheless, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leader premiums. Today, you will discover how to discern your essence and live powerful. Hi, welcome to Nevertheless, a show for organic leaders and leader perennials. My name is Bidemi Makmodi, and it's always an honor to be able to bring this podcast your way. Today is taking a lot of willpower to bring it your way because I've been seriously under the weather actually and um, at some point I lost my voice and but I'm, I'm fine, I'm getting back and I'm resting. I promise you I'm resting, I'm taking things easy and spending less and less amounts of time at work and even though I'm not sleeping as much as I would love to sleep, I'm at least lying down which is more than you can say for me on a good day. So yes, it's nevertheless, the show is dedicated to you because you're one of those people who wants to live your life from your core. You want to do only the things that are native to you. You want to live your life from the viewpoint of what did God ask me to do. And today I just wanted to take the time to celebrate you, to say well done, well done, well done, well done. I know it's not easy, but you are getting it done and that's a plus. I want to just thank you for always tuning in. I want to thank you for all the downloads i want to thank you especially for those who follow the teachings every sunday at 4 p.m now that's something extra we thought we could do so that people could ask questions i want to especially give a shout out to someone whose twitter handle is atlanre agbola thank you so much this young man i believe he's young i don't know but he retweets practically everything that i tweet thank you very much i also want to say a big shout out to a bridget election thank you so much god bless you for all the retweets a cheese on malize a whole lot of people out there who are retweeting i want to give a shout out to my girl zahira from south africa thank you for listening it's always a pleasure to hear that people are following and you know they're sharing and they're posting but above all of these things i would want to crave your indulgence to please do try and do what it is that you hear because honestly it works these things work and they are proven they've been tested and they have been proven both in my life personally and in the lives of so many other people that i i may not be able to mention today but these are principles and that's why you should follow through on them This week we want to look at something that I'm sure you will enjoy. Um, We had a very good run in February on this show and um, I'm sure March will not be any different considering the topics that we have lined up. Before we go on to today's show, I want us to take a look at a recap for last week. Last week we looked at ownership. We said every dream takes ownership and stewardship. And for me, the most powerful statement that came out of our last week's show is the fact that ownership at its highest manifestation is production and stewardship at its highest manifestation is accountability. So how accountable have you been this last week? And how much have you produced? I'm grateful to God to be able to say that His grace, even though I have not been performing optimally this week, you know, at my peak, I have still been able to follow through on everything that is for me a priority to get done, they have gotten done. And so I want to give thanks to God for that. Today, like I said, we'll be looking at something really powerful. So if you stick around when I come back, I'll let you know what it is. In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life's just simple. Don't worry, you're not alone on this life's journey as Bidemi shares powerful insights and principles from her everyday work and life experiences in her book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless from a bookstore near you or call 234-813-360-2883 or send an email to bdemi at bdemimarkmodi.com to place your order now. I guarantee you, you will make it Nevertheless. The show is still Nevertheless and my name is Bidemi Modi. Today we want to look at the subject matter, unleashing your willpower unleashing your willpower this has become necessary for me to talk about because of the feedback from the last 
show that we did on stewardship and ownership and a few people came back to me to say my problem is not that i have not taken ownership my problem is not that i will not even be accountable to and for what i have been called to do my problem is i am not producing i'm just not getting it done and i thought okay if that's a problem then why would that be your story we're taking a look at how it is extremely important that we unleash the power of our will to be able to get things done because when i was studying the bible in genesis chapter 1 by the time we got to verse 26 i saw that the bible said that god created man in his image and after his likeness and by the time we get to verse 28 it says that man was created so that he can be fruitful which i call a productivity issue god created man for man to be productive so if you have taken ownership and you are even willing to be a steward which means you're willing to be accountable yet you're not producing as you want to produce then maybe the problem is not with what you have been called to do maybe the problem isn't even with your processes maybe the problem isn't with your environment maybe the problem is you haven't unleashed your willpower because what i discovered is that god called us to produce so he created us in his image and after his likeness but he also now gave us a few things that i want to talk about on this show the first thing that he gave us was he gave us what i call gifts abilities and talents you know that but i call them the creative genius he gave us part of his creative genius some raw material he put some material raw material inside of us with which will produce so we've been called to produce the other thing that God gave man that he didn't give other created beings was he gave man the power of choice. The power of choice. The ability to be able to decide which way man will go. Man got that. Then God gave man the third thing and that was the will. And that's what we call the free moral agency. He made man a free moral agency so that man can choose by himself either to align or not to align. Now, if you have received a call or you have discerned or discovered your dream and you are not producing, could it be because you're not aligning your will with your creative genius? Because it's one thing for everything to come together. is another thing for that to make sense. What am I saying? I'll give you an example. The only way I can truly, truly explain this is to give you an example. In the Bible, we see the story of Samson in the book of Judges. Samson, even before his parents became pregnant for him, the Lord spoke and said that he was going to give them a child whose head a razor must never touch and strong wine must never touch his lips. And God told them specifically that he was going to use Samson to answer what I call the Philistine question. He was going to use Samson to deal with the problem of the Philistines you know, against the Israelites. So Samson's assignment was clear. It was so clear that everybody, probably by the time he was born, everyone, everyone knew what Samson was called to do. And his parents followed through. They made sure no razor touched his head and they made sure he never drank. They told him, they told him, this is what God has called you to do. This is what you cannot do so that you can maintain the grace and the anointing of God upon your life. And as a reward for that, God gave Samson strength. Because what God had called Samson to do was to physically fight the Philistines to a standstill. So Samson had strength to be able to kill 1,000 people with the jaw of an ox in one day. So this was not your scrawny two-pack man. This was like a 12-pack man. He had everything. He was a man's man. And so you think that, well, his parents, that is, his parentage was right. His upbringing was obviously right. The word of God over his life was clear. So Samson is success set up already. However, if you have heard that story in your Sunday school before, you know that Samson's story didn't turn out to become that successful fairy tale that we all thought because Samson had a weakness. His weakness was the women. And so Samson, after he was old enough, said to his parents, I want exactly those women that God has said I should have nothing to do with. His parents tried to counsel him and he wouldn't listen. And before we knew what was happening, Samson's head was shaved off. He was taken prisoner and his eyes were gorged out. What is wrong with this picture? For a man 
who had taken ownership because remember that Samson didn't say, oh, I don't want to do this work that God has called me to do. He didn't say this dream was too difficult for me to handle. He was willing. Actually, he enjoyed the ability to be able to kill. But somehow, this man that a thousand men could not put down, got put down by a woman. What was the difference? The difference was Samson had free moral agency and he decided not to exercise power over his will. So when I'm talking to you about unleashing your willpower, I'm saying to you that the power is actually the operative word here. That your will can be powerful, but your will can also be broken down. And if you know that the word power comes from the Greek foundational word dunamis, from which we get the word dynamite, you know that if a dynamite went off in your neighborhood, surely there will be change. Something would change. Something would either be broken down. Something would change. So when I'm talking about willpower, I'm talking about that power you exercise to bring about a change on the outside that you have already felt on the inside. I'll take that again. Willpower is that power you exercise so that you can bring about a change on the outside that you had already seen on your inside. When you hear about the dream, when you discover it, when you understand it, when you take ownership of it, when you see the possibility, all of that is change that you can see on the inside. But it takes the unleashing of your willpower. That thing that says to you, the circumstance may not be right. The environment may not be conducive. I may not be feeling up to scratch right now as I speak to you. My nose may be running. My eyes may be running. I may be coughing intermittently. However, this show is a commitment I have made to the world. So I am going to stretch and go through the discomfort of having to bring it your way. That is me exercising my will power. As I prepared, I thought about it and I said that it's even a good thing that they say exercise because it means that you may have to sweat, you may have to stretch to unleash your will power. So the question is, how does one truly, truly unleash their will power? What is even this will power about? Willpower and all, your will is the ability to submit your flesh and your circumstances and your convenience to the dictates of your spirit. I'll take that again. Willpower is an ability to submit your flesh, your circumstances, your convenience to the dictates of something higher. In this case, your dream. So I'd rather be at home today under the covers of my duvet on top of my bed watching tv and eating in between because i can tell you i didn't lose my appetite but i'm here trying to get this done even though it's really really not a hundred percent convenient why am i doing it because i need to do it i know that one or two people may be looking out for this show this week so when you discipline yourself or you subject yourself, the Bible says it like this. It says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. When you do those things that are not convenient, just so that you can act on a dream that you have taken ownership for, then you are unleashing your willpower. I say to people that the willpower is the bridge between your creative genius and your productivity. Because it's not, oh, I will. It's actually, I have done. Because until you do, it might just be a dream high up there that you may never attain. So again, what do you need to know so that you can unleash your willpower? The first thing that is important for every one of us to never forget is our why. Do you know your why? And please, I'm not talking about a superficial why. I'm talking of that why that you have taken the time to ask yourself. Ask yourself a why five times over. And for every answer you get, ask another why. Because at the fifth answer, you are now scratching the surface of why this is the dream that you want to push. So know your why. The second thing is you must see the big picture. And when I'm talking about the big picture, I want to talk about it from two angles. See the big picture of where what you're doing now can take you to. What it is all about in the end. But beyond that, see how what you do or what you don't do affects other people. 
it is critical that we know that whatever it is we do on a daily consistent basis or whatever it is that we refuse to do on a daily consistent basis can affect others. So number one again, know your why. Number two, see the big picture. Number three, feel the reward. What does this mean? I give you permission. Dream and see yourself in the reward for whatever it is that you want to do. Right now, I'm trying to save up money for something. And so every time I take a look at money I could have just spent on ice cream, shoes, bags, an outfit, and I have to deny myself those things, which in this case become immediate gratification because there's something that I'm believing and I'm working towards getting. I just try and close my eyes and imagine myself enjoying that reward already. And so that helps me to make the decision to just not go crazy and spend and spend and spend when I'm supposed to be saving. So again, do you know your why? Can you see the big picture? Can you feel the reward yet? I know what it is I want to get and I know it's peculiar smell. So sometimes I just take a deep breath and imagine that just smelling that atmosphere that I'm looking forward to get when I'm able to finish putting the money together. And please pray for me there that I would be able to continually exercise discipline so that I can get it. The fourth thing, which is our fourth step, is that when you know your why, you see the big picture, you feel the reward, then please exercise discipline exercise discipline again the bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet that means you are in control of the decisions that you will make willpower is nothing except the right decisions backed by the right actions that's what willpower is the right decisions backed by the right actions if it's just decisions then you don't have willpower because you have not done the fifth point is you need to be intentional are you intentional? Seriously, are you? Today at the discipleship class, I was talking to them and I was telling them that there is a difference between being wise and being smart. When you are smart, you are book smart, you are educated, you want to get ahead. But when you are wise, you know how to take information and apply it and apply it properly. So rather than pushing to be smart, push to be wise. What that means is if you tie it to the point of intentionality, Wisdom will tell you to prioritize. It's part of being intentional. Wisdom will tell you to make the requisite sacrifices. It's part of intentionality. So you need to know your why, see your big picture, feel the reward, exercise discipline, and be intentional. The beauty of all of these things that we're talking about is the more you exercise your willpower, the more confident you are and the stronger you get. And here's the thing. When all of this is done, you are the one that enjoys it. You don't want to end up as a Samson. Yes, Samson in the end took more Philistines down at his death than he did in his lifetime. But I'm thinking that maybe he didn't need to die to get that done. At the beginning of his life, nobody said he was going to die bringing them down. You get what I'm trying to say? I'm saying that when you unleash your willpower, you submit to the process and that way you get higher grade or a higher standard of results. So is there something else I would have you know or do so you can unleash your willpower? Yes. And I will use the story of David. David in 1 Samuel, I believe it's 17, came to deliver food to his brothers who were at the battlefront. And he found out that there was a giant, someone they called Goliath of the Philistines, again, taunting the children of Israel. And he had done that for 40 days, asking them to send out a man to come to battle with him so that they can determine which of the nations were better or greater. And for 40 days and 40 nights, no one could come to challenge Goliath. And David gets on this scene and sees that that is happening. And he says to himself, this can be done. But if you read that story, the discouragement and distraction started from his own blood brothers who said to him, he was a troublemaker. Why did he come here to make trouble again? He should go away and all that and all that. From that to the king Saul, who tried to give him his armor so that he could go and fight. But there were some things I learned from that story in 1 Samuel 17 that I'd like for you to also take on board in unleashing your willpower. The first one is you need to know your unique self. 
know your identity because what happened was in those 40 days and 40 nights each time Goliath came out he referred to the children of Israel as the servants of Saul but when David came David redefined their identity and he referred to the children as the armies of the most high God and he referred to Goliath as an uncircumcised Philistine so you need to know your identity. You must know your identity. Do you even know who you are? Do you know what qualifies you to do what it is that you do today? People ask me what qualifies me and I'm like, if not anything, all the hard knocks I've taken out of life qualify me to do the, what I'm doing today. The second thing is you must define the challenge correctly. What David did that every other person didn't do on that battlefield in those 40 days prior to when David came was that David realized that this was not a battle between men. This was a battle between two powers. He knew that this was a battle between darkness and light. And for that reason, he was able to challenge Goliath and he got him beat. The third thing I need you to know is that you must not be discouraged. Eliab, David's older brother, called him a rabble rouser, called him a troublemaker, told him to go away, asked him who he left the little ship with. Everything he said to David was to berate David. But David did not allow that to discourage him. Neither did he allow that to be a distraction for him. Instead, he marched on to King Saul. And he said, I can take that guy. The king also tried to discourage him by pointing to the fact that Goliath had been a warrior all his life. And that was when David began to remember that there was a day that a lion came at him. And with his bare hands, he tore it to pieces. And there was a day that a bear came. And with bare hands, he tore it to pieces. And David said, look, it's God that helped me do this. God will help me deal with Goliath as well. So he did not succumb to all the distractions and the discouragements that were thrown his way. The other thing I will have you know is that you must stick to what you know. Stick to what you know. Stick to what you know. Because Saul offered David his armor. He said, take this. If you must fight Goliath, then you must be protected. And the Bible records that David wore the armor and he couldn't move because it wasn't his. I've done an article on this before and I say you can't go to battle wearing another man's armor. So David realized quickly that this was not how he should be fighting. This was not how he knew how to fight. Stick with what you know. Some of us are too quick to change stuff. Yes, we want to be innovative, we want to be updated, we want to go with the times and flow with the times. But there are some basic things that work that you don't change. Imagine that if you're a Coca-Cola aficionado like I am, or a Coca-Cola fan like I am, imagine that Coca-Cola woke up one day and changed that ingredient that makes Coca-Cola Coca-Cola. They will lose all their customers, at least they will lose me. So even though Coca-Cola will change their packaging, they will change their advertising. They will do so many things. The basic ingredient that makes Coca-Cola Coca-Cola is what they know and they are sticking with it. So when I say stick with what you know, I mean like there is something in your core that makes everything you do you. Stick with it. The fourth thing is you must change your mindset because this battle is first won in the mind. For the first time that Goliath stood even in front of David, it was a mind battle that they were fighting. Goliath was trying to get into David's head. He said to him, do you think I'm a dog that you come to me with a sling? And David responds and says, look, don't worry about me. I will cut your head and feed it to the dogs. What was that? It was mental warfare. Everything that breaks us down, that stops us from unleashing our willpower begins from our mind. And the Bible has a scripture for that in Romans chapter 12. It says that we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Romans chapter 12. So you want to change your mindset. You want to move away from the mindset that says, oh, you can't get it done. You want to move away from the mindset that says, you need to rest a little bit more. You want to move away from the mindset that says, what if you did it and you didn't do it well all of those things as logical as they sound may just be something trying to keep you away from getting it done and so you find that it takes an extra will an extra power to get up and say even though i'm not sure i will get it when i do it i am going to go ahead and do it anyway Are you frustrated and tired of life? Do you feel trapped in life's maze and don't seem to find your way? 
or are you passionate about your purpose and destiny and want to find out more? Then get a copy of DNA. DNA, Destiny Navigational Application, is a book written by Bidemi Modi, where she coaches you to distill the answer to the cry of purpose, mandate, and significance. She teaches you how to descend your essence, discover your God-given mandate, deploy power, and demonstrate dominion. Get a copy, a copy of, of Destiny, Destiny Navigational, Navigational Application from any bookstore near you or call 234-813-360-2883 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimagmodi.com to place your order now. We've been on the show nevertheless and we've been looking at unleashing your willpower. We looked at Samson and we looked at David. For good measure, I will throw in Gideon, someone who started with no willpower of his own, but ended up with such willpower that he went to battle with 300 men against 32,000 and he won the battle. What is stopping you from producing via that dream that you have taken ownership of? It may just not be everything else you're looking at. It may not be the exchange rate in Nigeria. It may not be the fact that electricity isn't as constant as it ought to be. It may just be that you have not taken the time to unleash your power yet. Now, what happens, like I said, is the power comes from inside out to cause change on the outside. Are you willing to get this thing done? Then it is time to get up from wherever you are seated right now. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, so now get up, go get it done. Because honestly, if God has called us to produce, then it means that any one of us who doesn't produce by our creative genius has wasted something that God has invested in us. And I do know you don't want to be that person who's wasted what God has invested in you. Till next week when I'll come your way again, please, 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 please. Reach inside and show forth that thing that helps you to produce at a level that only God could have ordained for you to produce. And never forget that when you discover purpose, then you live powerful lives. My name is T.B. Debbie McMurdy and I want to say God bless you richly. Thank you for listening to Nevertheless. For more information and resources, call 0813-360-2883 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmodi.com. Don't forget that when you discover your purpose, you will live powerful.